excerpt was taken from a Full of Bloom interview with guitarist Adrian Vandenberg. You can listen to more interviews with Adrian at fullandbloom.com or on YouTube. Click the links in the description. With Here I Go Again, you actually recut the rhythm guitar tracks as well? Yeah, I recorded uh, the guitar tracks on the on the verses because apparently the version that John Sykes played, I never heard what he played there, but you know, Colonna thought it was like heavy metal country and western or whatever. So I I made those verses into what they are now, you know, actually with um, with a rockman. A wow, rockman is, is, is like a little sure. I remember the rockman. That's what I used for for the verses and um, for the chorus. Uh, they rented a um, Mesa Boogie setup or something that I wasn't used to, but um, I fiddled around with it a little bit and I had a practice guitar with me, like a Japanese guitar that I traveled with, and that's what I recorded the solo with. It was done in a, in, in a couple of basically two days or something, and never expected it to fly like this. You know, I had no idea. I liked Here I Go Again in the original version already. Um, as a matter of fact, I heard the original v- version when Vandenberg was recording the first album in Jimmy Page's studio in, um, in England. And when we would go, to, go out in a weekend, there was a rock club where we used to go to. And uh, Here I Go Again was, was a single and was, was played like a couple of times a night. I thought, man. That's a great song, and David, of course, sing incredibly, you know, so um, I would never figure out, I figured out that a couple of years later I would record some guitar parts on it and it would become a big hit single. Is this the time where you're in the studio recording that? John Sykes has uh, been notified that he's fired and he catches a flight over, and although I know you and John never met, you were actually in the same room at one point. Or oh, at yeah, least in... well, in the same in the same studio, um, because I was recording... I was working with that, that, that four-track cassette recorder uh, to come up with some guitar parts for the for Here We Go Again, and I heard a lot of screaming in, in the in the actual mixing room, and I had no idea what was going on. I thought, well, it's not my business, you know. So, um, and then later I heard it was uh, Sykes who apparently stormed in the studio, and uh, he didn't agree with that with the fact that David had decided not to keep working with John, you know. So we we talked about last time, you know, John and I never met, even though we have a couple of connections. He's a fantastic player, and um, I'm just surprised that he, he's never come up with um, with, with more records or stuff, uh, since then. You know, he did one or two with um, with Blue Murder, and then nobody ever heard of him again, you know. So that's pretty sad, actually, because you know, he's a great player. You're recording that part for Here I Go Again when he comes in? Or was that a different time? No, it was on, it was on the same day, but I, I was working in the back room with the cassette recorder to, to work on those parts. And in the main room, that's where the, the arguments uh, were flying. But I wasn't there, there in the main room. I heard later when it went quiet again, uh, I went to the room and what was going on. And Dave and Keith Olsen told me, well, you know, John Sykes stormed in here and, uh, and they got into a heated argument. Are you at Goodnight LA recording at that time? Yeah, Keith and David and the engineer were in the mixing room while... John Sykes stormed in there, and um, I was in the back room. And so, essentially, at this point, the entire band has been fired, and it doesn't sound like you were really included in that part of the recruitment conversation, right? Uh, Well, no, because... um uh, like I said, you know, when when I decided um, to join David, you know, that, that's one thing that, that sometimes pissed me off a little bit where every once in a while you read like a comment from somebody and everybody's a journalist these days, apparently. <laughs> you go, yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's a pity that Adrian stopped with Vandenberg, such a great band, but I understand he went for the money. Well, that was the last thing I've ever done anyway. But And also, David was a couple of million in debt at the moment. He didn't have a penny. And nobody knew that the album was going to do what it did. So, I just wanted to make great music with, a, with an amazing singer. And um, that was the reason why I joined David. And, and we, since we talked about it, about working together already for a couple of years, it was logical that it was going to happen. And I was just really happy to join him because he's been one of my all-time favorite singers. So you're the first one in. And then, like you said, Tommy and Rudy came in next. But there wasn't any like, hey, who do you think would be another good guitar player? And should we get Vivian? Or did you just hear about Vivian coming in? Well, it was a little bit of a surprise to me because uh, David never mentioned to me that there were going to be two guitar players. I was kind of assuming because um, the slide in phase in the touring was just with Cozy Powell, uh, John Sykes, David, and um, um, the original bass player, you know? So um, Neil Murray. Neil Murray, great player, by the way. Yeah. yeah fantastic player. So 
I didn't know, so it was a bit of a surprise. But um, then I thought, well, you know, why snake two players? And that's fine too. I'm thinking a great player, you know. So it was all fine with me, and I, I found it really exciting. I, I've read a couple of one or two weird interviews from Vivian years ago where he was kind of uh, saying, well, yeah, Adrian didn't want me in the band, and he was instrumental in getting me out of the band. Well, I wasn't because, as far as I know, we had a great working relationship, and I got on with him fine on the road because we we toured for a year and a half, you know, and I hung out with Vivian, you know, regularly and. Never a problem as far as I'm concerned, but you know, David didn't want to keep working with Vivian because there were, you know, some problems with it, with Vivian's wife at the time, and now he's, now he's divorced. So I can I can mention that. Otherwise, I wouldn't have mentioned that. But that was one thing, you know. And David um, wanted to write the songs with me and, and and not with Vivian. So I can understand that Vivian wasn't too happy about that. But that was the, you know, in the end, it's David's band, and and he calls the shots. And I've I've always had my own band, so I know what it's like. You shouldn't have too many captains on one ship, you know, and everybody knows it's David's band. So I was just uh, happy to be David's right-hand man, so to speak. So it was understood that you would be writing the next album with him rather than including others, huh? Yeah, yeah, it was because we started writing on the road already, and it went really smooth here in David's room or my room or even in a dressing room, you know, we were... We were usually working on ideas and I recorded them. I worked them out on my four track recorder in my hotel room. And so we, we were pretty well prepared. Uh, for with a bunch of the songs when the tour was over and then I went home to Holland and worked for a couple of weeks on um, on more songs and more music ideas and stuff and I flew to back to David after a couple of weeks and we started getting the songs together and stuff Was there any tension during that tour that ever surfaced? Not when we were on the road you know I, I can't remember any tension I remember uh, that when we started rehearsing initially for um, Slip of the Tongue uh, the first couple of rehearsals Vivian was there and he was um just really moody because um, David wanted to work with me as far as the song goes and um, Vivian was really not really very happy and, and he was radiating that and I think that was a very important reason that David decided he didn't want to work in that atmosphere but on the on the road for me everything was great you know we, we traveled in the bus all together and uh, we always had a lot of laughs in the uh, you know back on the bus and I only have great memories of of, of that tour and, and, and the atmosphere and the band, you know, everybody got on great together, which was, I know, quite unusual, you know, if you live together for, for a year and a half, like day in, day out, that's very unusual that, that, that you have such a great vibe in the band. And, and I was under the impression always that the same was the case for Vivian, but... Uh, I don't know, you know, I can imagine that it must have been frustrating for him when we started recording, uh, rehearsing the Slip of Song songs, that um, he didn't have any songs in there. And obviously he wasn't used to that because with Dio, like you said, you know, he was the guy. We thought he's a great player, you know, and, and Dio, he was fantastic also. And so I don't know, I'm, I'm like a hardcore optimist and I, I always try to... Um, and I usually succeed in it uh, to avoid negative vibes, you know. And and sometimes I don't I don't even notice them, you know, if they're there. So yeah. Right. That's but okay. apparently they were they were uh, in the rehearsals. So because David picked up on it, you know. And, yeah, it's, it's just weird that it happened. And um, with Steve, I, I had I had a great time on the Slip of the Tongue tour. Steve and I are still in touch, you know. We we became good friends after that. Two. Oh